Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and you are in my dining room and behind me is this week's project. It's a buffet that Phil and I have had since we got married. In fact, it actually was Phil's way back when he was 19 and needing a dresser. It was a naked piece of furniture and that's the way it stayed for many years until I refinished it with this crackle technique. It was actually this weird thing where you put down some kind of uh, chemical and then you put the paint over it and it caused the paint to separate and make it look like it was crackling. It's actually still kind of cool. I still like it, but it's time for a change. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. I may turn it into a dry bar. I may do something completely different. Not quite sure at all, so stick around. You might be wondering why I'm not starting with cleaning it but the fact is I'm going to scrape and I'm going to strip and I just didn't see the need to clean it first. So I took up the hardware and got to work. Because this is pine, I'm going to go with a hundred grit sandpaper because I am afraid if I use something like 80 grit or 60 grit, it's just going to be too rough. I'm stripping these doors, but in the end, it's a waste of time <laughs> because I decided not to use the doors. But I wanted to show you the process. I started with sanding and then I went to scraping and then I decided to put stripper on and I'm using a carbide scraper to get off the last bits of junk that's stuck on there. Now the top I decided I was going to go ahead and scrape it as much as I could and then sand it. Now why I did that I don't know. I honestly didn't want to use stripper unless I needed to. This was turning out to be a very big sanding project here but I'm still glad I didn't use stripper because it just gets everywhere and it's hard to get off. I also scraped this first drawer before I put stripper on and then I put stripper on around the really tough areas. You have to go with whatever you're feeling at the moment just remember you always need to neutralize that stripper with mineral spirits when you're finished otherwise that stripper will keep on working so anything you put on top of it it will just strip it away i wanted to put legs on this so i needed to figure out how this skirt on the bottom was attached. It had a lot of hidden screws. Be careful when you start to cut into something that you're not going to run into a screw. Now I need to cut that last part off. I'm using my oscillating tool to get right in there. It's not the easiest tool to manage. It's nice and small, but It can be loud, but it worked. I'm trimming up the edge here because, again, the oscillating tool doesn't leave a clean line. But in the end, I decided to put trim on the bottom to just cover up my terrible cutting. <laughs> it works. I mean, you know, you do what you got to do. If it looks good, why not? I had decided that I was finished with all the scraping, so I, I started to strip the last parts. This side I left overnight, and man, what a difference. Look how easily it comes off. Now I put that plastic over the edge, I draped it over the side, and then I just put that junk right into the plastic. It was the cleanest way to do it. Uh, 
that was such a sweet little note that my husband Phil left me. It made me smile. <laughs> I was a little leery using this carbide scraper on pine, but it did work pretty well. As long as you go with the grain, just remember, always go with the grain. I wasn't sure which part I was going to paint on the drawers, but I decided to do the center after seeing the stain that the hardware left the last time it was finished. I'm measuring this section in the middle because I'm taking two of the drawers out and I'm going to have Phil cut these panels for me so that I can put the panels in the center. I did practice with the circular saw, so someday soon I'm going to be using it all by myself. Now normally this part is not a problem. It usually comes right out. I can cut everything out, but everything was screwed in and the screws were not coming out. I started to take them out and then they'd go back in <laughs> and then they wouldn't come back out. It was quite a challenge unexpected challenge at that. I used my power driver to get the screw out and it came out, but then when I went to get it out, it just got pushed back in. And here I'm showing you <laughs> that I'm struggling to get the stupid thing out. It was ridiculous. If you work on furniture a lot and you don't have chisels, I recommend that you get them. <laughs> I use these chisels all the time and here I'm trying to chisel out the wood that was left behind when I took out the, the framing. Soapstone by Fusion is the winner. I'm using that to paint the piece and here this is called a pencil sander. It's for very tiny areas and if you don't have one I recommend you get one. I am putting mineral spirits on all of the drawers before I sand them. I'm letting it dry because I'm using a water-based stain here by General Finishes. It's called Hickory. And I put that on after the mineral spirits is dry so it doesn't interfere with the water-based stain. This section I'm sanding the wood filler that I put on. This is a huge gap, so I have to put the wood filler on in stages. Let it dry, then put more on. Otherwise, it takes forever to dry. It's Friday, and I'm still working. <laughs> Whoa, this, this has been the toughest project I've had in a really long time. It requires a lot of time because I, I took out this middle section here, right here. And this little part here was where the wood broke in pieces when I was popping it out kind of split and there's a, a spot on the other side which popped out nicely the second time around it just left a big gap and I could have put trim over it but I decided to just fill it in with wood filler and be done with it where I'm at right now the two ends have doors and I took the doors off and I stripped them. I went through all of that and then realized they are in bad shape. I thought it would be better just to replace them. What I wanted to show you really quick was the drawers. It has a green tinge to it, the wood. I don't know why it has a green tinge, but I'm thinking I'm gonna go darker so that the green tinge will go away. That means my cool water-based stain which was so lovely to put on because it doesn't stink it's all dry i waited for it to dry and now i'm going to put java which is a gel stain and an oil-based stain so so much for my water-based stain i'm going to get back to it it's friday night and it's dark out yay <laughs> Because the hickory looked kind of greenish on the pine, 
I am taking a oil-based stain over the water-based stain. Now you can do that as long as you let the water-based stain dry. This is Java by General Finishes. It's one of my favorites. And as you can see, it does look better. I'm using mineral spirits here just to clean off the little bits of stain that got on the paint. It's fast, it's easy, <laughs> it works pretty well. Something I learned about mineral spirits is it does not work on water-based stain, so keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to put wood filler over paint. Sometimes when you paint a piece, that's when all the little flaws pop out. So don't be afraid to do that again and again if you have to, just make sure you sand it down enough. These are the panels and when they get cut, they kind of splinter on the edges. So I'm sanding on the back side because that's where it's splintering. Phil cut them upside down so I wouldn't have the splinters on the front. You can see now, I hope you can see how this looks like baby poop color. <laughs> I apologize for that, but it does. It totally does. And because I had done the hickory on the drawers, I had to do the same for everything else. So I had to put on the hickory color, the water base, and then the java, the oil base. So yeah, it took longer. Just everything on this piece took longer. The amount of damage on the inside of this piece was crazy. It was even worse than the outside. Now, this obviously I did, but I don't know how the rest of it got like that. Maybe it was like that to begin with. They didn't care because it was the inside. I don't know. These are what I'm replacing the other doors with, and I need to fit them because they only come in certain sizes unless you custom order them, and that would cost a lot of money. That meant I had to make the doors fit to the cabinets, or make the cabinet actually fit to the doors. I had to measure the sides, and what I forgot to do was make room for the piece that I'm gonna to have to put on the top or the bottom. Now, I didn't wanna put it on the bottom because that would leave a little ledge there and I didn't want that. So I put it on the top and that meant I had to take the magnet out that was there to keep the door shut, but I was going to have to put it back on. So I wanted that piece there so I'd have something to put the magnet on. I knew I was probably going to have to use some wood filler in some of these seams, but I wanted to try and get it as flush as possible with the other piece of wood. That took a lot of moving it around, taking things off, putting them back on, but I just needed to take the time and do it right. Now that I have that top piece on, I can get the side pieces the way they're supposed to be and glue them in so I can put the doors on. Well, it's Sunday and I'm hoping to be finished today. This is where we're at. As you saw in the video, I added some pieces so that the doors that I bought will fit. And I'm gonna go back and sand all this today. This is a work in progress. As you can see, I have three panels that I did right here. Those panels are gonna go in here, one on the ceiling, one on the back, and one down here, because that space is going to stay open 
and I'm hoping that will look really nice. In that space, I will be putting a wine holder, so it will be holding six bottles of wine, which will be cool. And yesterday, I'm in my truck. I'm getting ready to go to a place called Classical Glass. They sell just glass. They offer uh, classes for stained glass. I wish I could take one. They're really expensive. <laughs> but the reason I'm going there is I have replaced, or I'm going to replace, the two doors on the buffet. And I want to put glass in the new doors. So I'm gonna go find out how much it's gonna cost. I brought the doors with me just in case. Um, I wanna get the exact measurements. So that's why I'm bringing the doors. So let's head out, it's freezing. Let's see, it's 26 degrees out. Yikes, it's November for crying out loud. I bought two panes of glass. She cut it into two pieces. Very nice woman. I will show you the glass in a little while when we're at that point. I'm going to finish sanding and then I'm going to paint the inside, the outside, and then stain the top, put in the panels and put the hardware on, oh, put the glass in the doors, put the doors on, put the hardware on and I <laughs> wasn't really pleased with the first la layer of hickory stain I put on these cabinet doors. They were maple. And the second layer I was really worried about, this is the Java, but it actually looked much better after the second layer. Now I had to make sure that I got all of the little crevices because when you open the door, you were going to see the other side. The back of this was masonite board and I didn't really want to paint it so I left it alone and just taped it off and painted the rest. When you're putting a piece of paneling into a very tight space, sometimes it gets a little messy. This piece of paneling is going on the back of the cabinet, so you'll be able to see it when you're looking straight on. However, there's gonna be a wine rack in the way, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. I am gonna put polyurethane on the piece that's on the bottom because I will have the wine rack sitting on top of that. Now this piece, this is the bottom piece, and it's going to be showing, so I'm painting it. This is actually, is this the bottom? Yeah, this is the top piece, not the bottom piece. But the other piece was the bottom, because I have to wait for that to dry, and it's an oil-based top coat, so it's gonna take a while. I'm also putting oil-based polyurethane on the drawers because they will get handled a little bit more and the cabinet doors because they too will get handled a little bit more. So they need a little bit more protection. Since I took the skirt off of the bottom, I need to put some legs on this piece. And I had some hairpin legs in my leg box and these we're going to work perfectly. I didn't want it to be too tall, so these actually worked just right. Now, I don't always trace around it, but this one was kind of funky. There were some weird holes, and I wanted to make sure everything was lined up in the same place, and I found that this was the easiest way to do it. And I'm getting those holes in there because I'm going to pre-drill. Now, this is very important. 
there was not much wood. You can see right there, there's not much wood for that screw to go in. So you need to make sure that you check the screws before you start drilling holes. And you see, I'm not drilling very much, but I'm drilling enough and the screws are small so that they don't go in too far. You gotta make sure you check that because that's easy to forget and then you're gonna be really sad. After I started to stain the top, this was revealed. Now, a lot of you recognize this if you refinish furniture, but those are called swirlies in my mind. And they happen when things get stuck to the sandpaper, especially with a softer wood. And this is very soft wood. And they are very hard to see. So you can see here, I'm trying to see if I got them all. I should have put on the mineral spirits, then taken my 220 sandpaper and then sanded with that so that the grain would be raised by the mineral spirits. I got most of it off, but next time I'll do the mineral spirits it's first. A little, very old saw. It's like a little circular saw. It's kind of janky, but it worked. It was much easier than using my oscillating tools. So, yay! So here we go again. I'm using the hickory water-based stain first. It went on much nicer than the first time and there were very few swirlies, if any that you could really see. After the water-based stain dried, I put on the Java, which is the oil-based gel stain. Take a quick look at the old hardware. I put it on and I didn't like it, so it came back off. Here's the glass that I'm going to insert into the cabinet doors. Those cabinet doors had panels when I got them. I will be putting out a video about how you take the panels out of the doors and insert the glass. So don't be afraid to do that. I will have a video to tell you how. Finally time to put these doors on the cabinet. I apologize. I don't have footage of the hardware. I thought I did, but I guess I don't. So I'm going to have to show you how to put the hardware on these doors in my other video. It is important that you measure all the way around so everything is the same on both sides. And it's very important for you to make sure when you're drilling those holes or the hardware that you make sure you don't drill too far in because you don't want your screws to go through. I still need to get the knobs on the doors and you can do this before or after you hang the doors. You just have to make sure that drill bit is straight and then you can put your knobs on. The very last thing is the magnet. There's a magnet on the door and a magnet on the opening so that the cabinets will stay shut when you close them. Well, I'm glad that's over. If I had to describe this project in one word, I would say time. It took way more time than I thought it was going to take. It just seemed like there were so many twists and turns and everything that is normally easy seemed to be a lot more frustrating. I have mixed feelings about the results. Two things, hardware and color. Really, the, those are the two things. And those are two really big things. You don't think that hardware can change a piece so dramatically, but it can. And color as well. Color can dramatically change the look of a piece. This one, the hardware I had on there to begin with, I really like, but on this piece, I do not like at all. I changed it and I love this. It looks more modern. The other way, it looked old in 70s, but not in a good way. <laughs> I know 70s is kind of coming back, but no, 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 no. The color, it's supposed to be dark gray. Soapstone, it's a color that is very weird. 
paint color in general is weird. Now I knew I've used this color before. I knew that sometimes it looks more blue than it does gray. I just thought that it was going to look more gray. That's on me. I'm bummed because it's my piece. If I were selling this, I wouldn't be bummed because somebody out there is going to say, oh, I need a blue piece. I want a blue piece, but that's not the case here. This is in my dining room. It'll be a while before I change the color because the idea of doing it again, oh no, no, no. I don't want to do that right now, but I will. And I'll probably go back to a more neutral color, a lighter gray or a real dark gray, but not this, not this. Thank you for being here. Good luck on your next project. Don't get discouraged. Sometimes some projects take more time than others. See you next time. You can do it. Thanks for watching my video. You can find more videos just like this on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.